This is a lecture about data representations. In this lecture, we're going to talk about how numbers are stored on your computer. You may be used to talking about things like integers and floating point numbers, uh, and we're going to get into how, what those numbers actually mean and how they're stored on your computer, how you can write them into a, a binary string, how you can get them back, and then we'll drill just a little deeper than that and talk about fixed point arithmetic, which is an extension of integer arithmetic on computers and is very useful once you start getting into digital signal processing. So let's begin with how information is represented on a computer. At the most basic level, as you probably know, uh, everything on a computer is either a zero or a one. It's a, uh, a binary number and we often call a binary digit a bit and bit is actually just a contraction of binary digit. Um, and we have collections of bits in a row that are that have to represent everything that you have on a computer. Um, so uh, another common unit that uh, that these bits come in are are eight bits together are called a byte. And you'll often hear uh, memory and data storage on your computer, your hard drives, your uh, RAM, things like that, referred to in bytes. So suppose we wanted to represent a number with just ones and zeros. Uh, so if you can only have two digits, a zero and a one, then you can't use a base 10 counting system like we do normally, where you, you may count one, two, three, and on up to nine, and then you, you move into a new, the, you start using the tens digit. Uh, and you put a zero in the ones digit. Um, so this is this is a base 10 counting system that we usually use. When we're talking about using only zeros and ones, then we need to, to move to a base 2 counting system. So in base 2, so in base 2, you start counting 0, 1, and then 2, that digit does not exist anymore. So now you have to move and use a twos digit, uh, use another digit together. So this is the twos place and the ones place. So that's 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. Uh, and of course you go on and on in this. So this is the base 2 counting system. Uh, and the reason it's called base 2 is because if you have some number of places here that can hold numbers, um, and here's your, your decimal point on, or binary point if you're going to use base 2, then this digit here um, in all base systems is the ones uh, place right here. Um, and that represents whatever your base is. If your base is B, it's B to the zero power. And anything to the zero power is one. Um, the next digit over is the, uh, well, in our base system, it, it's the tens system. It's whatever your base is to the first power. So in a base 10 system, this is the tens digit. In a base 2 system, this is the twos digit. Um, similarly, this next one is your base to the second power, so it's 100 in base 10, or it's 4 in base 2, uh, and it goes on and on this way. Um, and so typical integers represented on a uh, computer, so these are integers, if we don't worry about um, negative numbers or fractional numbers or anything like that, Right now, if we just worry about um, positive integers, uh, then they'll be represented in uh, as we just described. So that uh, they'll be they'll be in base two, and they'll have some number of uh, of bits dedicated to them, and you just count through them. And anything that is not used, anything up above here, just contains a zero. Um, so uh, how many bits are typically in an integer depends actually on what computer you're working on. It used to be very common for there to be 32-bit integers uh, that were used. Uh, and it's increasingly common these days to have 64-bit uh, integers uh, on your computer. 
Um, and uh, it should also be known that, that in some, comp some programming languages, integers, uh, especially ones with large numbers of bits, are sometimes also called uh, longs, which means long integers. All right, so we were just talking about integers, and I've uh, gone ahead and moved our little uh, placeholding uh, diagram over here. And we talked about integers that were that were strictly positive, um, which another name for that is unsigned. Uh, but we know definitely on a computer that not all integers are unsigned. We can represent negative numbers, for example. So how is that done? One way you might think of is called a sign magnitude. So in sign magnitude, you would represent the magnitude of your number uh, with these uh, digits, some number that you've allocated to it. Um, and then you add one more bit. So this would be a one bit uh, that you tag on, say, to the front of it that indicates uh, whether it's a plus or minus number. And we use this a lot when we're actually just writing integers out, right? If we say this is negative 3 or positive 10, what we've done is we've, we've used a little placeholder, a little digit, to hold either a plus or a minus. Um, and, and so similarly, we could do that. We could signify that there's some bit over here that can be plus or minus uh, to indicate whether a, a number is positive or negative. Unfortunately, there are some drawbacks to this system. This is a very straightforward system, but one of the drawbacks is um, if you have a circuit in your computer that, whose job it is to add numbers together, it needs to do something different if you have a plus sign or if you have a minus sign up here. So you actually would have to have two different circuits, one that adds numbers and one that subtracts numbers. Um, so this system is not in widespread usage, and I only mentioned it because it's a very intuitive way to represent uh, negative numbers. Another way uh, to represent negative numbers that was used uh, somewhat uh, historically, but it isn't used anymore, is called one's complement. We'll discuss one's complement because it leads naturally to two's complement, which is the uh, most widespread way to represent sign numbers. Um, in a one's complement, uh, so positive numbers are, are done as unsigned, and negative numbers, you invert every bit. So under this system, if you had four digits, and if we wanted to represent one, we would write zero, 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 one. And if we wanted to write negative one, we would invert that bitwise. So a, a zero would become a one, and a 1 would become a 0. So this is positive 1, and this is, would be negative 1. And under this system, if you add numbers together, you actually don't need to know. Uh, you can just look at the bits to know how to add them together. You don't need to know whether it was a positive or negative number. Um, and you also, similar to the sine magnitude system, you, you reserve this top uh, bit for holding essentially the sign. If this were an unsigned number, uh, this would be a 0 in the 1's place, a 1 in the 2's place, a 1 in the 4's place, and a 1 in the 8's place. So this would be 14 uh, in unsigned, or it would be negative 1 as a signed number. Um, and this illustrates generally that you need to that bits floating around by themselves don't have an inherent meaning. That you need to have a system for interpreting those bits uh, to to get in, to understand what that number represents. Um, but uh, the nice thing is, if you have an unsigned adder and you added fourteen and one, uh, you would add these two numbers together, and it would end up being one one. 1, 1, which is 15, if you added them up as unsigned numbers. If you added them up as signed numbers, you could still add it just the way that we did. Um, it just turns out that this number, if you add them as unsigned number, numbers, also represents uh, negative 0 
Um, so you say, well, why did you say negative zero and not positive zero? Um, but remember I said that if the, po the, the top digit is a one in this one's complement system, it still means it's a negative number. Uh, but when you have a negative number and you want to figure out what was the, the, the rest of it, the positive equivalent, you invert every digit. So it's zero, 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 which is obviously zero. So this is a negative zero, um, which is the correct answer if you add positive one and negative one. So one of the advantages of, of this one's complement system is that you can add numbers together and figure out later whether they were unsigned numbers or signed numbers. Uh, they, the adder still gave you the right answer. It was just a matter of interpreting the results correctly. Um, and we've also illustrated one of the major shortcomings of one's complement arithmetic, which is that, um, that we have uh, 1111 is equal to negative 0 and 0, 0, 0, 0 is equal to positive 0. So there are two representations of 0 in the ones complement system. And that's not ideal, and that is the major shortcoming of ones complement and why uh, two's complement arithmetic was invented. And this is the system that's most widely used today. So in two's complement arithmetic, it's almost like ones complement. Um, uh, but the process for, for getting a negative number is instead of in just strictly inverting bitwise, uh, we say if it's a negative, you invert bitwise and then you add 1. Uh, so let's see how this works. If we have, uh, again, 4-bit four, four numbers and we write 0, 0, 0, 1, that is equal to, uh, to positive 1. And if we want to make a negative 1, uh, we invert that. So 1, 1, 1, 0. And then we add 1 to it. So we get 1, 1, 1, 1. And under this system, that is what is called negative 1. So, uh, so we have negative 1, and uh, if we added negative 1 and 1, same as we did over here, uh, then what we end up in this case is, is adding 0, 0, 0, 1 to 1, 1, 1, 1, and we get 0, 0, 0, 0, and then we have to carry a 1 off the end here. But we are, we're only adding 4 bit numbers. We don't have a fifth bit. In fact, two's complement takes uh, advantage of that wraparound explicitly and it just drops off uh, that last digit. Um, it does not allocate a new, di a new uh, bit for it. it. It just lets it fall on the floor and you end up with all zeros. So here we added positive one and negative one and we ended up with a number which is clearly zero uh, just like it should be. Um, and another nice thing is how what happens if you invert zero in the two's complement system? Well, uh, if you want to invert zero, so that is zero. If you invert it, um, then you end up with one, 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 one. You add one. Uh, we just did this over here. One, 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 one plus one is all zeros. So that is our negative zero. But if there's only one representation for zero. And that's one of the major advantages of two's complement. So two's complement has the advantage that, uh, that it represents both positive and negative numbers. Um, you can read the first digit to know whether it's a positive or negative number, just like sine magnitude. Uh, you don't need separate circuits to add positive and negative numbers. Um, and there's only one representation for zero. So uh, two's complement is kind of the ideal system, and it's the one that's most widely used.